Today I'm gonna to show you the way that I make pour over coffee, specifically one of my personal favorite V60 recipes that is easy and I believe anyone can use to brew great coffee at home. More on that in one second, but first some disclosure. I humbly don't believe that there is only one best method for each coffee brewer. And then you'll see I am the best at everything. I believe rather that there are many methods and many recipes to brew great coffee out of one device. Maybe you agree with me. So while there are others that have shared their go-to recipe for a specific brewer and that has helped so many people People brew better coffee at home. I'm hesitant to do that today and here's why. Different recipes bring out different highlights of a coffee. Some recipes it's sweetness and complexity and others high acidity or clarity and some they try to achieve the best of everything. But one thing is for certain, taste preference is a subjective matter and that is why I'm hesitant to label one method as the way that you should brew your coffee as each recipe result might appeal to a different palette. And to say there's one recipe for every coffee is also a difficult thing to do. Coffee is so fascinating and diverse. It's wonderful. And its flavors can be too. So today, this is one method on how I brew my coffee, but I'll be sharing more recipes and methods in future videos. Okay, with that out of the way, this is a pour over brewing recipe called the 4-6 method. It was invented by World Brewers Cup champion Tetsu Kasuya in 2016 and has become a go-to recipe for so many of my coffees as it creates a wonderfully bright cup of coffee with lots of clarity and transparency. Now, if those words scare you or confuse you, don't worry. I'll explain what they mean a bit better at the end of this video. So today we're gonna brew this recipe in the V60, but this is a recipe that works for the Chemex or Origami or even flat bottom brewers like the Kalita or Stag X or even this little guy. More on this guy later. Tell me more. The 4-6 method starts by splitting the water into 40% and 60%. Now don't let that worry you. I'll try to make this as simple as possible. This is a multi-pour brew method with flexibility to determine how you want your coffee to taste. It's so amazing. You pour the first 40% in two pours and then decide how many pours you want to make for the last 60%. So the first two pours decide the balance and acidity and sweetness. And the remaining number of pours will decide the strength of the coffee. Let me walk you through this so it makes a little bit more sense. It's very easy, I promise. My recipe today is gonna to be 20 grams of coffee to 320 grams of water boiled around 197 degrees Fahrenheit or 92 Celsius. And if you don't have a thermostat built into your kettle, just wait roughly 60 to 90 seconds off of boil before brewing your coffee. I want you guys to grind coarser than you normally would. On my Easy Presso JX, I would grind between 24 to 26 clicks. On my niche, I would grind above 50 at about 12 o'clock. On my ode, I would grind around six, but whatever grinder you have, grind slightly coarser than you normally would. You want it to look like kosher salt as pictured here. The reason we're gonna grind coarse is multiple pours will raise the agitation in the coffee. And with fine coffee, this could over extract or cause our coffee to become bitter and astringent or just clog the brew. So coarse ground coffee is very key in this method. Once the coffee is ground, pre-wet your filter and then discard the water that's in the carafe. So you can use whatever dose of coffee you would like, 16 grams, 20 grams, 30 grams, even a 45 gram Chemex. Big boy. But this is how it translates. Each pour of water needs to be roughly three times what the dry coffee weighs. For example, if I'm using 20 grams of coffee, each pour would be 60 grams because well, 20 times three. So apply that to your dose. And once you've done this, You'll be set. But this is amazing, don't miss this. Our first two pours will determine the sweetness and acidity of our coffee. If you like sweet cups of coffee, you wanna have a smaller first pour. And if you like acidic cups, then you wanna have a larger first pour. For today, for simplicity, I'll keep all my pours at 60 grams in this video. If I did wanna raise the sweetness, I could do a 50 gram first pour and a 70 gram second pour. In this method, I start each pour after liquids have dripped down into the server. Tetsu believes this timing makes the extraction efficiency very high and also increase the brew strength for coarse ground coffee like this. Okay, let's get into this. I'm gonna start by adding my coffee. And I'm gonna flatten out my bed. Once you do that, I'm gonna tear my scale. I'm gonna start my timer and I'm gonna do my first 60 gram pour. I always give it a little swirl for the first pour only, just so that I can make sure all the grounds are saturated. Once 30 seconds hits, we're gonna pour another 60 grams of water. 
This time we're not gonna stir it, we're just gonna let it draw down. From the third pour on, the total number of pours will change the brew strength. If we want a stronger cup, make more pours, and if you want it weaker, make fewer. This is what I love about this method. It's adjustable and adaptable to each coffee and it tastes so great. Again, for simplicity, I will keep my pour 60 grams, so I will do three more pours for a total of five pours, waiting for each to draw down and begin the next pour. While you're brewing your coffee, if the drawdown between each pours is taking longer than 45 seconds, next time just coarsen up that grind. You don't want this to go too, too long, but the nice thing with this brew method, it's very hard to over extract coffee, at least in my experience. Now, this is debated, but I always aim for around three to three and a half minutes of a drawdown time. Don't be conservative with this. If it's longer or shorter, that's not the end of the world. Ultimately, taste is the judge here, but I always use that as a reference point to my grind size. When all five pours are finished, I want you to remove the brewer and then stir your server. Now, if you don't have a server, that's totally okay, but servers are a very important tool to elevating your coffee experience. Not only do they look great, but being able to mix your coffee and then smell the aromas after swirling is a good practice to help taste not only with your mouth, but your nose too and this smells fantastic. Now, once you've stirred it, go ahead and pour that out and enjoy it. Mm. It's delicious. I, I truly enjoy this method as I find it just creates a wonderful lasting aftertaste with great clarity and sweetness. But I'd love to hear how you like this method down in the comments below. Do you prefer this method? Have you tried this method? Or do you prefer another method? Let me know. Now, before you go, I'd love to quickly address some of the terms I shared today. I think talking about these commonly used coffee terms helps us understand each other a little bit more. And I'm all for that. Coffee shouldn't be pretentious. Let's break down those walls. First, let's talk about acidity. Acidity is sort of self-explanatory, but acidity used as a coffee term refers to the bright, tangy, fruity, or wine-like flavor characteristics found in coffee. I often say think like green apples or grapes. Now, Clarity asks whether or not the taste components in your brew are obvious or muddled and muted. This attribute may be difficult to assess when just growing your palate, but keep going. Eventually, you'll understand Clarity a little bit more. Sweetness is an interesting one because you may or may not normally associate this word with coffee. And admittedly, sweetness in coffee won't always come across the same way people often think of sweet and sugary things. Candy. Because of the caramelization process that occurs during roasting, sweetness will often be perceived as brown sugars, thing honey, maple syrup, or caramel. And complexity is in many ways the opposite to clarity. And it's not a bad thing. Maybe people love their cups to feel layered and interesting. Complexity is a little harder to explain, but as you grow your palate in coffee, it becomes more and more obvious. Please leave a like down below if you found this at all helpful. I would truly appreciate that. And if you're new around here, consider clicking that subscribe button for more videos like this one. And lastly, I've recently launched a Patreon. I launched this because I want to continue to do unbiased reviews and giveaways for all of you. You can find that down below if that interests you at all. In the meantime, continue to brew great coffee and continue to brew at home. Peace. We'll see you guys in the next one.